Hello everyone, it's Baxter Zevchenko, and I have something to talk about. Recently, DSP talked about a comparison between Resident Evil 4 Remake uh, PC version and console version, and he made some interesting statements that I managed to validate. Because he talked about another person playing the game, and he had some nasty things to say, and some things that were just sli just not even slightly untrue, just completely untrue. And we're all going to go over that one step at a time. Now, first of all, before we even start, what you're looking at is DaVinci Resolve. Take notes, DSP. That's a free video editor that you can use. I just want to show you something funny. If I go into the mixer, I had to boost DSP's audio by like eight fucking decibels because he's so fucking quiet. Fix your fucking audio setup. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so that's that. Let's just start right into the video. I chose DaVinci Resolve for this because it has excellent playback controls. And with these playback controls, we're going to do some kill counting, which is going to be fun. But let's just get right into the DSP rant. Here we go. Last night, okay, my wife and I said, oh, we want to watch someone else watch, play Resident Evil 4. I'm, I'm 10 hours in. Today I'm going to be 13 hours in. Let's watch someone else play Resident Evil 4. So, we started watching someone playing Resident Evil 4 Remake on PC, hardcore mode. And I was like, oh, this is great. I'd actually love to watch this. Because I want to see, could they do better or worse than me? Remember, that early village portion kicked my ass. It's so weird that he... that he. It's like, you don't watch videos because... You, you don't watch video because you want to be entertained. DSP watches videos because he wants to compare himself to other people. Ugh! I just can't. I just can't. It was very difficult on hardcore, especially not remembering where you could go, like hiding in the house and stuff like that. And I'm like, I wonder how someone else is going to do um, playing it on hardcore on PC. I want to see PC. First of all, is there any difference between PC and console? I'm curious about that. Evidently. And how are they going to do? All right. Are you ready for this? I'm about to tell you a story. You're going to love this one. I love stories. Okay. Let's fucking go. Just listen to this. So they arrive at the village. Okay. There's, just like I did when I first arrived at the village, they're sneaking around. They do a couple stealth kills, and they alert the village. Oh, shit, they're on the run. Oops, they got cornered dead. Fine, that's what happens to everyone the first time, right? All right, so I'm not going to show you the footage of this because I've tried to keep the footage that we're going to watch to a minimum because it's quite long and we're going to go over it. This first try that the way DSP describes actually happened. The person that I'm going to point out which the footage actually belongs to, so the video that DSP evidently watched. The person, when they first arrived at the village, they stealthed, did a stealth kill, got discovered, got cornered, and died. Now something DSP's gin brain is doing is happening, and suddenly there's footage that doesn't exist. So let's listen to what DSP's brain is coming up with here. Second time. Maybe a little bit more stealthy. Gonna go around, maybe we'll do a house or two. Kill a guy. Oh, I alerted them. All right, let's run around a little more. Okay. In this case, the person had bad luck. Okay. They had very bad luck. And they kind of just backed themselves into a corner right away. Dead. All right. So attempt number three. Now the person is starting to get a little more serious. They're understanding. Okay, this is pretty hard. Okay. So this second try never happened in the original footage that I'm about to show you. There's only two tries. There's one try, which I just talked about, at which the person failed. And then they immediately cut to the next try in which they succeeded. So I don't know what this was. I'm just going to ascribe this to gin braining. This guy is just bad with remembering. Evidently, I'm not saying this to just discredit the footage that I'm about to show you. Because we're going to link the footage and what DSP is saying together. I'm trying to convince you that the footage I'm about to show you is what actually DSP has seen. But he's just bad at remembering stuff. He is incredibly bad at remembering stuff. Let's watch the third try that actually happened. Here's attempt number three, all right? I, I wish I was exaggerating with you guys. I really do. I wish I was exaggerating. Here was attempt number three. They stealth killed two people. They alerted the town. They stood in the town square, probably killed two. Ran across the map, okay? Killed maybe two more. I was counting, too, all right? And then ran again across, got some more ammo. I think they got one hand. I think they used the flash grenade. This is an important detail that you got to remember. Remember the flash grenade. The person in the footage used the flash grenade. 
maybe killed one more, ran into a corner by accident. It's the corner, do you know where there's the well that goes down and when you return to the village, you go underneath the village with that well and uh, you could pop up at the other side. So they got to that well, but it's blocked at the beginning of the game. You can't go down that well. So they're literally backed into a corner. Okay, so the person backs themselves into a corner next to a closed off well. That's the second detail we need to remember. And they have nowhere to go. As they back themselves into the corner, the chainsaw guy comes out. It does the animation. He's coming out. I was like, this guy is so fucked. He has no idea. He's running out of ammo. Okay? And the chainsaw guy's coming at him. All right? So he has maybe 20 bullets. So he's just shooting willy-nilly. He's shooting all the villagers coming at him. He kicks one or two. He shoots the villagers coming at him. He kicks one or two. And I said to the cat, I said, where's the chainsaw guy? We're waiting for him. He's not coming. It showed the animation. He came out of the door. Where the fuck is he? Huh? So he just he's just continuously shooting and he's doing a few a few, you know, uh you know, uh melee attacks or whatever. And you know, uh you know, uh then all of a sudden the bell rings and they all walk away. What? I was counting. He killed nine people. He only killed nine. Okay, so according to DSP's witness report. The person in the footage actually only killed nine people. We're gonna validate that. Okay, the chainsaw guy never, never got to him, never even showed up. Okay? And he didn't survive five minutes. There was no fucking way. It was impossible. I was like, what? So another detail, the person didn't survive five minutes. Yes, we're gonna get to that and explain that as well. What just happened? And I'm just staring and my jaw dropped. I was like, that's not what happened with my experience at all. It was so funny. Just listen to this. He hadn't looted most of the town. It took him five to ten minutes to loot the rest of the town because he hadn't even got he didn't even go into the building where you you push the thing in front to stop them from coming in and it kills time. He never even went in there. So this is actually an interesting detail that I uh, I can confirm to you visually in this video, but I can confirm to you. Uh, I watched the original footage of that video. The fight ended at around the... Th uh, yeah, it took... Yeah, it, the fight ended at around uh, 30 seconds after 30 minutes. So 30-30. And the person exited the village around 8 minutes and 30 seconds later. So yes, between 5 and 10 minutes to loot everything. All right. He's looting. He's taking forever. You know what he says? Oh, maybe that chainsaw guy went and rang the bell. Because the chainsaw guy never came after him. He actually thought it was the chainsaw guy who went and rang the bell to get the villagers to leave. So number one, that was actually a fucking joke, DSB. This is funny, coming from the guy who doesn't understand sarcasm on YouTube videos in current year. If you watch his DSP reacts, the jokes are fucking flying airplanes over his fucking head. It's amazing. There's a fucking airline established over his head just flying jokes above it because they knew, oh man, this is so fucking cheap, we can do this all day because this guy will never understand it. Okay, I, I, I took this joke too far. But the second thing was he said, the guy made a joke about the chainsaw man ringing a bell. Now, what do you think happened in a specific person's footage of Resident Evil Remake, Resident Evil 4 Remake, to be precise? Well, let's listen to it. So that guy that came in with the chainsaw, did he just, like, did he go and ring the bell? Is that his deal? There it is. What you just watched was the 39-minute mark of Christopher Odd's Resident Evil 4 Remake Playthrough Episode 1. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, this pretty much confirms it, at least for me, you don't have to trust me on this, this pretty much confirms it for me that DSP watched Christopher Ott. He watched this person likely before. People already suggested that he watched Christopher Ott before. Now, to me, it is pretty much confirmed that this is actually Christopher Ott's footage. So now, let's go over the things that we need to remember before we go into the raw footage of Christopher Ott's fight. So, DSP said the player in the footage used a flashbang. Not that that's something obvious. You get a flashbang earlier, but the person used it the player backed themselves into a corner next to a closed off well. The player only killed nine people. We're going to validate that. And there was a long period of time between, 
between the end of the cutscene of the Chainsaw Man appearing and the end of the fight. Let's say 30 seconds at least. Because that's like, I, I think that's long in a fight. 30 seconds, that's pretty long, okay? So there's these four things that we need to remember. Now we're going to watch the raw footage of Christopher Odd's successful village fight. Okay, and we're going to count the kills. I have my fingers on the playback controls. So we can validate if everything that DSP is saying is actually truthful or not. Spoiler, it's not. Let's just get into it. So he starts the fight. Stealth killing the zombie right in front of us. Let's go, let's go. I should notice I count this kill. So that's the first kill. It counts towards the village fight. After the village is over, after the fight is over, I'm gonna explain to you how I think the mechanics of the village fight work. And I'm also gonna give you some comparisons that I found on the internet. But for now, let's continue with the footage. Hope they don't mind the dead bodies. I'm gonna fast forward here because Chris just walks around for a bit and explores. He tries to open tries to open the wooden the wooden gate here and it doesn't open. He fidgets around with his controls. You can see it's PC. He notices the lamp that he can use against his pursuers in the fight. And this is the point at when he gets discovered. Now in my footage, I don't know if you can actually see this, you can trust me, I made a red marker here. And it says 9 minutes 46 seconds. 9 minutes 46 seconds, the official fight starts. Because he gets discovered. So let's see what happens here. Remember we have one kill. Let's see how Chris fares. Well. <laughs> we found him. So he gets hit here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Breaks free from a hold. Heals. And he drops the oil lamp. Oh! From the footage, that shouldn't be so clear. So I'm gonna rewind to see how many kills there were. There is one zombie up in flames. And at half speed, you can see that the other one gets run down by the bull. So that's two kills, meaning we have three kills total. I mean, that mostly worked. He runs into this house. Shoots a zombie. Doesn't kill them. Nope, I don't want to be here. Breaks oh, the God, barrel. Grabs the hand grenade. Jumps I? out of the window. Hello, flashbang. You remember this little friend? Because he's gonna get used. That's totally intentional, yeah. Yeah, he did it on accident. And hello, corner with the closed off well. Here we are, and Chris is gonna make his last stand here. So let's continue. Remember, at this point, we're at three kills. Shoots the zombie, doesn't kill him. Chucks a hand grenade. Evidently, he killed some zombies here. Right now, we can't see that. I'm just gonna forward, go forward with the footage. We're gonna count the item drops. That's the most... Reliable method of counting the kills. We're gonna see the little streaks of light over the dead bodies. Every streak of light is a kill. I'm gonna continue. Still at three kills. He kicks this guy. I'm gonna go backwards a bit, I think. Nope. That's actually wrong. I'm gonna go forward. As you can see, there's two streaks of light. That's two times... Pesetas, that's two kills. I'm gonna go forward a bit, because the guy he just kicked dies too. That's gunpowder. Six kills. Now he's going to shoot the guy that he has his reticle on right here. Two times. And this guy is dead. He died. We're not gonna see it until a bit later in the footage, so I'm not gonna count the kill just yet. But he drops pistol ammo. I'll get back to you on that. So six kills for now. 
But let's just continue. This is the problem, guys. Last Mac, he only has 10 more shots. DSP said the guy was running low on ammo. He said 20 shots, but he actually only had 10 left. Kicks another guy. That guy is also dead, I think. Yeah, he's dead, as you can see. That's 7 kills, another gunpowder there, right on the gun icon. He kicks a whole group of people. I'm gonna go forward slowly. No, I'm gonna go backwards, I'm sorry. As you can see, they're on the left. Next to the leftmost villager holding the shovel. There is a red streak of light. That was the guy I was talking about earlier who dropped pistol ammo. So that's 8 kills. Now we're going for forward slowly. He kicks a whole group of people. You can see there's only one drop there. And right now, three more appeared. So that's 11 kills total. Remember, DSP said this guy only killed nine people. We're already at 11. A guy on the ground is writhing. Okay, he stabs turning. him. That's 12 kills. And in comes the chainsaw man. They're gonna need to start dropping me tons of bullets. He kicks a group of people. And if we go by slowly, you can see that he kicked like three people total and staggered off a lot of them on the left. You gotta be kidding me. One guy is writhing on the ground and I think two people died. So we're at 14 kills right now. Come on. He gets into a hold again. Breaks free again. Does another kick. The bell rings, ladies and gentlemen. The fight is over because he has more than 15 kills. And that's it. The fight is over. Oh, what is that? That's the end of the fight, man. It's over. That's Gotham. La Campana. So, ladies and gentlemen, evidently, what we saw is a player used a flashbang. He made his last stand next to a closed-off well. He made the bell joke that DSP talked about. But this person didn't kill only 9 zombies. They killed 12 before the chainsaw man appeared. And made it to the threshold 16 seconds after the cutscene of the chainsaw man appearing ended. I'm gonna prove this to you. The red marker is when the chain... This red marker right here is when the chainsaw man spawns. It's at time 11.55. The fight ends at 12.12. 12. That's 17 seconds. 17 seconds. So no, not... It takes a long time for the chainsaw man to appear. The path he would have to take would take 20 seconds to get to where Chris is. At least. So evidently, the Chainsaw Man doesn't appear right in front of you because he can't instantly get to you. And also for the whole duration of the fight, because DSP is going to say, or he, he already did say, that the fight didn't last five minutes. We're going to get to that. The fight started at 9.46. The fight ends at 12.12. So that's roughly two minutes and 30 seconds. I'm going to tell you how this fight works. For every... There is, an, there is a hidden timer, which is approximately 5 minutes, I would say. Or it's approximately 4 minutes, something like that. I think... Wait a minute. I'm actually going to calculate here. Let's... Give me a second. So it's like, you need to kill 15 people. Oh, that's wrong. You need to kill 15 people on average times 15 for 15 seconds. Yeah, that's approximately 4 minutes. So, there is a hidden timer, and that hidden timer reduces the clock. It's, it's set at approximately, I think, four minutes. For every kill that you make, that clock gets reduced by 15 seconds. You kill 15 people, the fight ends. So, evidently, if you're faster enough, 
if you faster enough, if you're fast enough, you can end this fight even before the chainsaw man spawns. Yes, that is possible. How do I know this? Well, would you look at that? Please sue me, Games Radar or whatever the fuck. But they actually did a little testing. And they tested out different approaches to handle the village fight. How long would, do you have to survive the village? Having tested all variations, the length of the village survival sequence actually varies depending on how bloodthirsty you are and the approach you take, with kills mattering. Here were our results. <clears throat> Running around, no kills and not entering the house, approximately 4 minutes. So this is the baseline. Not killing anyone, it takes around 4 minutes. Total warfare, which is exactly what Chris was doing, constant kills, and not entering the house approximately two and a half minutes. Doesn't this line up with the two and a half minutes fight length that Chris had? Hmm, as I'm scratching my chin. House defense, constant kills, and entering the house approximately five minutes. Now this is higher than baseline because of cutscenes, most likely. So what do we learn from this? DSP is a fucking idiot. He is misremembering things. Yes, the fight didn't last 5 minutes because Chris actually fought people and killing villagers reduces the timer of the hidden clock. He also didn't just kill 9 people, he killed fucking 12 before the chainsaw man appeared and 15 to end the fight, 16 or 17 seconds after the cutscene of the guy spawning in. He used the flashbang, he made the he made the bell joke and he fought his last stand at the closed off well. So at this point, if you're believing that he's argue, arguing in good faith here, you are sorely mistaken. Let's continue. <laughs> I was like, what? Now I'm not even done yet. He, By the way, it's confirmed he was playing on hardcore because he saved his game. You could see it said hardcore. This is actually true. Chris said so at the beginning of his video. After the opening cutscene ended, he said this is PC, max settings, hardcore, and you can also see it on a save game. Okay, listen to this. He gets, now this is still chapter one. He gets to the next part of town, okay? Every fucking enemy he's killing either dropped handgun ammo or a green herb. I'm not kidding. You know how when you play normally, they're all dropping the pesetas or whatever? Pesetas. You pronounce it pesetas. No one was dropping pesetas. Pesetas. I fucking hate that shit. He even pronounces Callisto wrong. He pronounces it Callisto. It's Callisto. I as in kit. They were all dropping critical resources. So he clears the next area. And if you remember, there's the next area like the farmhouse and stuff like that. Okay, so let's get back to what he actually said during that clip. Now, I'm not going to bother you with the entire footage, but I watched that footage. It's the first 20 minutes of the second episode of Resident Evil 4 Remake by Christopher Ott. And in that footage, until the end of chapter 1, he killed approximately 23 zombies. Now I counted, you just have to trust me on this. 7 out of those 23 people dropped handgun ammo. Two dropped ten bullets, five dropped five bullets. And a whooping, ginormous, gigantic amount of zero out of 23 zombies dropped health items. They mostly drop pesetas or gunpowder. So he's lying. Again, bad faith. Let's continue to the next clip. Because it gets even more ridiculous, you know it just gets worse and worse and worse. And once you get past that, and you get to where you save Lewis, that's where chapter one ends, okay? He finishes chapter one. It starts chapter two. He looks at his inventory. Listen to this. He looks at his fucking inventory at the beginning of chapter two. In the beginning of chapter two, once you grab a hold of Leon's controls again, after the cutscene ends, you have no inventory. Your inventory is fucking empty. Why? Because your inventory gets stolen. You have to recover it. He has 71 bullets, 
about 11 shotgun shells. We need to remember these numbers. 71 bullets, about 11 shotgun shells. Three green herbs, two red herbs, a yellow herb. A yellow herb, two red herbs, three green herbs. And he had already used a full heal with another yellow herb attached to it in the first part. Besides the point. Still had durability in his knife. And he still had durability in his knife. This is hardcore. I said, what the fuck game is he playing? And again, it wasn't like he was absolutely perfect with his shots. He was missing shots. He was, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so I'm watching the play. I'm like, this is like nothing like what I just did on PS5. Evidently. But the thing is, I'm pretty sure while DSP watches footage of other people playing games he already played, he is not paying complete and f or full attention. Because the only time that the description that he just set with the numbers, they're not exact by the way, matches anything is after chapter 2 abandoned factory where you first encounter the merchant. DSP actually looked at this man's inventory after he already had traded with the merchant and I'm gonna tell you why. This is the screenshot of Chris's inventory after the situation I just described. DSP said 71 handgun bullets. So we count 11, 24, 74. I say close enough. All right. He says about 11 shotgun shells. 5 plus 7. He says about 11. Actual value is 12. Close enough. He says three green herbs. I count one, two, I count two. Maybe he thought, maybe he thought the first aid was another green herb. I don't know. He might have misremembered. He said two red herbs. Yes, this is correct. Two red herbs. And a yellow herb. Yes, also correct. Why? Because Chris traded in the three spinels you get from shooting the three blue uh, the, the five blue medallions on the farm he traded them in for the yellow herb and and dsp also said that this guy still had durability on his knife yes dsp because he repaired it he paid pesetas to repair it so this is just incredibly bad faith at this point all right chris played well he really played well. So let's get back to the final clip and then end this mess because frankly, I'm getting pissed off at this point. But, <clears throat> get this. At one point, he had seen a bear trap and he was poking the bear trap with a knife and then a guy jumped out. He ran up and the guy had not, the enemy had not attacked him and he had not attacked the enemy yet. He took the knife, he went like this. Boop, 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 and the enemy died. So the situation, how he describes it, didn't happen the way in Chris's footage. In Chris's footage, I'm going to show you the raw clip. Here it is. And we're going to watch it first and then we're going to analyze it. I think I can make it to him before he turns around. Definitely not. Okay. All right. Let's go back. Okay. Okay, so what actually happens is he's not busy with a bear trap. The zombie actually turns around, notices Chris, engages in the fight, slashes. The first slash misses. Let's go forward slowly. Second slash connects. DSP is adamant that there was no damage to that done to that zombie besides the three stabs. Guess what happens next? Parries the attack. Combat stance. Three okay. stabs. And the guy is dead. How do we explain this? Pretty simple. There's HP variations in zombies. Even on hardcore. Not all zombies have the same HP variation. So sometimes a zombie would die to a knife slash and three stabs, while some zombies don't die to that same amount of damage. And DSP argued in bad faith. 
And in that argument, we're going to go back to it, I'm pretty sure he said that no other damage was done. He ran up, and the guy had not, the enemy had not attacked him, and he had not attacked the enemy yet. He took the knife, he went like this, boop, 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 and the enemy died. He specifically said that there was no other damage besides the three stabs. Wrong. Three jabs with the knife, the enemy died. On hardcore mode. And I was like, what the fuck? I, 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 uh, what is going on? So I don't know if the version he's playing is fucked up. I don't know if just every PC version is fucked up. And here we come in with the blame game. Of course, another person evidently is having an easier time playing the same game that DSP is playing. What does that mean for DSP's ego? It's bruised. It's offended. It's hurt. How do we compensate? We lash out. But not at the other person playing the game, but at the game developers. That's correctly. We blame the game, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's happening. But I was just like, I don't even, like, I'm watching with my wife. I'm like, I don't even know if we should watch the rest of this playthrough. Yeah, but the way he argues is incredibly bad faith because evidently he is either misremembering unintentionally, that's very probable, or he's doing this intentionally, which is actually the worst thing to do. Because if the whole thing is going to be like that, like, what's the point? This is, like, literally no challenge. Every Everyone he shoots, they die within a few bullet hits. Right? Almost no big deal. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And everyone's dropping tons of resources. Wrong. Every enemy is, like, dropping ammo and shit for him. Wrong. Uh, what's happening here? I never seen nothing like that in my life. Never. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And again, it it's likely that you never paid attention enough to actually notice the kill numbers or the fine details of what was happening. Because we established who the footage belonged to, we compared the footage right now, and evidently, some things didn't happen the way you recall them. So you're a terrible witness and an unreliable narrator. Evidently, and that's why so many people think that DSP is lying intentionally, because he's doing this all the time. It may just be his memory being fucked, and there's tons of instances where I can tell you that this guy's memory is so beyond fucked. His capacity to remember things is so easily influenced, considering that this playthrough came out on the 27th or the 28th, and DSP watched it on the evening of the 28th. And this podcast, this rant, was on the 29th. So his memory is so bad recalling things even 24 hours before. Less, 12 hours before. Like, it's evident that either your memory is shot or you're doing something to your brain that's hindering from remembering things or you're doing it intentionally. So let's finish this. It's definitely PC. You can see the prompts for PC. You press space bar, press F. And it says when he's saving, it says hardcore mode. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. But I'm and by the way, this wasn't even someone who like they're playing an early copy. This is they just started playing recently in the last couple of days. You know, I've been playing since Friday, but they just started playing it. So <clears throat> I have no idea. And you see what I'm saying? PC version in this case is dramatically different from the mainstream experience that most people are having with the game. Why? What the fuck happened? And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what pisses me off so much because he's being disingenuous about a personal experience that pissed him off and ascribing it to an entire game version. An entire version of a game must be at fault because he had a different experience, a more grueling experience with a game instead of just ascribing this grueling experience to him being, for lack of a better term, fucking dumb and just doing the thing that the game wants him to do. That's it, I'm done. I'm gonna get, I feel like if I watch more of this guy, I'm gonna get angry. I wish you all a great weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Baxter Zevchenko. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm tuning out. See you all later.